Hi, so this part um, is geometry and um, we're going to have a whole chapter on geometry in chapter six. So this is just getting our feet wet and kind of looking at it as, in a, a more applicable sense, not like formula based, but more of like how the real world uses geometry in simple cases. So we just want to start off with areas of two well-defined shapes that we know. So the two well-defined shapes that we're going to start with in this chapter, of course, we're going to have more in chapter six. So we'll have the rectangle and the circle. And so for now, we're just going to quickly use the formulas to actually just do word problems. So here, the rectangle area and perimeter formulas are given and the circle and the circumference area is given for the circle on the right. So the area of a circle, I'm sorry, <laughs> the area of a rectangle is length times width. And the perimeter is just the sum of the sides. They just like to make it fancy. Um, but essentially, you just have to add up all the sides. But because a rectangle has the properties that opposite sides are the same length, that we're adding L or the length twice, and also the opposite sides are the same length on a rectangle for the width, so essentially you're adding two widths. So you're just going to be adding two L's and two W's, but really it's just adding the edges together. The circles area is pi r squared, and pi is known as a Greek letter. It's an irrational number, so pi is known as pi. And it's just a lowercase p in Greek, but we know it so well as like 3.14 because it's pi day on March 14th and things like that. Um, but really, it's an irrational number. It's not really 3.14, right? And if you go to the calculator, you're going to see pi, which is a few buttons below the green second button. And if you hit pi, that's a nice little Greek symbol, but then hit enter. And it gives you this decimal representation. Um, in this calculator, which is the Texas Instruments 30XS, if sometimes it defaults to a exact answer. So if you just click mode, just make sure that um, your mode is in classic form, not math print, because we do want it in a classic form, because we're going to be rounding a lot in decimals in this class, because it's like a real world applied class, so math class, so just make sure it's in classic mode. All right, so after you hit pi and enter, you get this decimal, and it kind of goes on forever. It goes way beyond 3.14, right? So anytime you're going to be doing area for a circle in this class with pi in it, anytime we have pi, make sure you use the pi button, not 3.14, unless it specifically asks you to. Other than that, always assume the symbol pi. Okay? Okay, cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do this um, first example. Now, I do love this first example a lot because it has to do with pizza, which is one of my favorite foods ever. Of course, it's everybody's favorite food. And um, it has to talk about, like, it talks about it in a sense of dough and how much dough we need. Um, and if we think about dough, dough is not an area, right? Dough is actually um, volume, right? It ha it's heavy. And so when you order a pizza, let's say, I don't know, from Blaze Pizza, Domino's, or Pizza Hut, if you just order the same crust, you order two pizzas with the same type of crust, not fancy, but just same regular crust, that thickness of crust is consistent with each pizza of that type of crust, right? So really, if we look at a pizza in the sense of, here's your pizza, and it has like this thickness, right, here, so let me go ahead and there's the thickness, so because it's, it's going to be a little bit high. So essentially, this pizza that, you know, is a circle, right, so here is the radius from above here, the picture, right, and, but it's the radius, and then there's like a little bit of this thickness, 
Well, if we assume that every pizza of this type of crust is the same thickness, which we pretty much can, is going to be consistent, that we can go ahead and just use area and not volume. So for this case, we would assume, we assume the thickness is the same for each pizza. Um, and then this means that we can use area now. So we'll just have to make sure that that note is taken in consideration. And the reason why this, sound, this is important, it doesn't sound that important, but it is, is because then we would have to use volume, right? Because it's like a ball of dough that we spread out, so it's like volume. But if we can assume that the pizzas that we're talking about will be consistent in, in thickness of dough, we can just use the area of the pizza. So that means we can use this formula up here, which is the A equals pi r squared. Okay, so... Um, if I know a 10 inch diameter pizza is 12 ounces of dough, then I can figure out how much ounces how much ounces of dough I need for a 14 inch pizza. So when we talk about diameter, diameter is just two radii, meaning just the distance from one edge of the circle through the radius to the other edge. And of course we have like many of these, like from here to here, to here to here, just as long as it goes through that center and to the opposite side. And we call that a diameter. And then um, the diameter is to radii, okay? Okay, so we know what we're doing. So we have two pizzas, one's a 10 inch, one's a 14 inch. The 10 inch I use 12 ounces of dough, the 14 inch I have no idea, but this could remind us about proportions, right? So the first thing we're going to need to do is find area of each pizza because we're going to be eating this whole area because we assume the thickness is the same between the two. And then we're going to go ahead and then find the ounces of dough. We really can't do take a 10 inch and a 12 inch and the 14 inch and make a proportion because we're not eating 10 inches of pizza. We're eating... Um, uh, the whole, the volume of the pizza, the whole slice, right? So but, but because we assume the thickness between slices are the same, that we can use just area, just the top part. So let's go ahead and draw a nice line and let's start. So the first thing we want to do is find area of each pizza. So for the 10 inch pizza, okay, we do know that for a 10 inch pizza, that's the entire diameter is 10 inches, right? It's from here to here. So that means that the radius would be half of that, which is five. Okay, so that means the area of the 10 inch is equal to pi five squared, which is equal to 25 pi. For the 14 inch, we know that the radius is half for a 14, which is 7. And this means that the area for the 14 inch is going to be pi 7 squared, which is equal to 49 pi. Now, I wouldn't put this in the calculator and get an approximation. In fact, something happens really nicely with the pies later on. So just leave it as 25 pi and then 49 pi, and then I'll show you why in just a second. So now that we have the area, meaning the top of the 10 inch pizza's area is 25 pi square inches, and the 14 inch, which is probably the large, is going to be a 49 pi square inches of area. Mm, you're going to want pizza after this, huh? So the second part now is now let's go ahead and find the ounces needed for a 14 inch pizza.
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and set up a proportion and then we'll solve. I'm going to do categories, you know, categories and then units across. So the first category would be the area of the um, 10 inch pizza, which is 25 pi per 12 ounces of dough. And that's going to be equal to the 49 pi over um, or per, I don't know, X ounces of dough. I have no idea. And then up here, let me go ahead and just put a 10 and a 14. Do you kind of know how I categorized it? And let's go ahead now and solve. So we multiply across. So we have 25 pi X equal to 12 times 49 pi. If I divide each side by 25 pi, then we get x equals, and then notice what happens here, 12 times 49, and look at the pi's. I told you something nice happens with the pi's. We never even needed them in the first place. They reduced out of the proportion. It's so great. So we have 20, 12 times 49 over 25. So when you're doing these problems with pi in this chapter, go ahead and leave the pi in. And then when you set up the proportion, the pi's nicely reduce out. And, and in fact, we don't even have to um, deal with pi on our calculator, but just take 12 times 49 and then divide it by 25. So we have 23.52. All right, so then we kind of get caught up in the problem. I'm almost like, what is, what was X and what is 23.52? Well, remember what we needed in the first place. It, we were given the inches of uh, pizza and we know the ounces of dough. And what we wanted to find was a 14 inch pizza and the required amount of ounces of dough. So here, a 14 inch pizza would require 23.52 ounces of dough. So we would say a 14 inch pizza requires 23.52 ounces of dough. Okay, so moving on to volume. So now, now we can do volume. Now, not only do we have the area, length times width, but now we have a height, right? We have boxes or cylinders. I always call it a soup can, you know? And um, a rectangular box has a volume of, notice the area. So it's just the air, essentially it's just area of the base times the height. That's like in general volume is always area of the base times the height. So with the cylinder, it looks a little more complicated, but it's not. It's just the area of the base times the height. Well, notice here the base is a circle. And the area of a circle we know is pi r squared. So if we look over here, we'll notice that the area of the base, pi r squared times the height. And so that's the area of the cylinder, um, the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so um, using these formulas, we go ahead and look at the next example. So it says the website says that a 48, 50 pound bag of sand are needed to fill a sandbox that measures eight by eight by one. How many bags are needed for a sandbox that measures six by four by one? The first thing I do notice is that um, all the units are the same. So the first sandbox is in feet and the second sandbox is also in feet. So that's real nice. The other part I do notice is that sand bags are sold at 50 pounds per bag. So this is a 50 pound bag and then this next um, sandbox will require 50 pound bags. So we're just looking for the number of bags we need for each sandbox. We do know for the first sandbox we need 48, 48 50 pound bags and we need quite a few bags of sand for that first sandbox. So we just want to see how many bags we would need for the second sandbox.
Because the sandbox, um, we always remember that sandboxes are rectangular. So if I went ahead and just drew a rectangular box, and I want to um, draw a rectangular box that reflects the first sandbox, which would be like eight feet here and eight feet here, but the height of the box is only a foot, like that. And so this one requires 48 bags. And so this next one, if I go ahead and just copy this and say, okay, well, this next one will measure six by four. So it's a little um, smaller. And then we would want to know how many 50 pound bags of sand we would need. So that would be like the, okay, I have no idea. So we have two sandboxes. One takes 48 bags and the other one is a six by four by one and we don't know how many bags. So we can kind of see already that we're going to be using a proportion eventually. We wouldn't be able to use a proportion just yet because there's just so many, so many measurements given. But what happens with the sandbox? We fill it up, right? It fills up. So we're going to use the volume of a rectangular solid and we'll find the volume first of each sandbox and then we can set up a proportion. Just like the pizza, how we found area first then set up the proportion, we're going to do the same process here except with volume. Okay, so the first step would be to find volume of each um, sandbox. So find volume of each sandbox. Okay, so the first sandbox is going to be, again, length times width, the, you know, the area of the base times height. So length times width times height. So eight feet <laughs> times eight feet times one foot. So eight times the eight is 64 and 64 times one is 64. So we have 64 and then we have to multiply feet times feet times feet. It's like X times X times X, right? So feet times feet times feet is feet cubed or cubic feet. And that's how we get the cube in there because there's three feet. Okay, so the next part would be the other sandbox. So the volume of this sandbox would be six feet times four feet times one foot. And so that would be six times four is 24 and 24 times one is 24. So 24 and then feet times feet times feet. <laughs> it's cubic feet. Great, now we have what we need. So we know we have 48 bags for this volume and we don't know the number of bags for this volume here. So I'm going to do sandbox with sandbox, right? Category with category. So now we're going to set up a proportion and solve. So we're going to have um, 64 cubic feet per 48 bags of sand. I'll put bags, there we go. And 24 cubic feet per, um, and then I don't know how many bags of sand here, and that's what I wanna find. But notice that the process is the same, except now we're just like finding volume first. And then we can cross multiply and solve for x. So we're going to have 64x equals 48 times 24. And therefore, x would equal 48 times 24 divided by 64. And we can just put this right in the calculator. So we'll say 48 times 24 divided by 64. And we get 18. And then all through all this, like, what were we doing, right? So we look up, we're like, oh, yes, 18 
bags of sand for the other sandbox, right? So we would say we need 18 bags of sand for a 6 by 4 by 1 foot sandbox.